Let's try solving an optimization problem together. In this problem, it looks like there's going to be a person in a rowboat, and this rowboat is going to be two miles from the nearest point on a shoreline. Okay, so it's going to be a straight shoreline, and if it's going to be nearest point, then it's got to be perpendicular. So imagine that this is the straight shoreline, and we're going to say that the person in a rowboat is going to be right here at this point. I'm going to call this point B for the rowboat. They're two miles from the nearest point on the shoreline, so this distance right here is going to be two miles. So this person in the boat wants to go ahead and reach a house that's going to be six miles further down this shoreline. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and put a point over here and then call this H for the house. This person can row at a rate of three miles per hour and they can also walk at a rate of five miles per hour. It looks like what our job is gonna be is we're gonna to have to go ahead and use this combination of rowing and walking to find the least amount of time required to reach the house. So we want to minimize the amount of time it's going to take for this person to reach the house. So the question is, is how far from the house should the person land the rowboat? So when should they kind of take that boat and land it on shore and then do the walking the rest of the way? Going ahead and labeling a couple more things on this diagram. We know the distance from this point over to this point is going to be six miles. Don't forget, we know that this is a right angle. And while we don't know exactly where this boat's going to be landing, we just need to come up with a hypothetical spot for where this boat's gonna land for now, and maybe that's gonna be somewhere like here. So just for the picture's sake, let's say this boat is gonna land right over here. I'm gonna go ahead and call this L for where it lands. So then let's go ahead and call this distance from here to here in this triangle, let's call that X. And so this distance over here from the point where it lands all the way to the house, if this whole thing is going to be six from H all the way to this point over here that's perpendicular, then this distance from here to here must be equal to six minus X. And just so we have everything labeled, I'm just gonna call this point over here point P so we know what to refer it to as. All right, so to get started, we need to come up with an equation. Just focusing on this triangle for a moment, notice how it's a right triangle. Because it's a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem and say that if we go ahead and square PL and add that to the square of PB, that's going to equal the square of LB or BL. We already labeled PL as X, so I'm going to go ahead and replace this with X and say this is going to be X squared plus. And then we already replaced PB. We said that's going to be two miles. That's right over here. Go ahead and label in. That's going to be two raised to the second power. And then for BL, we didn't label anything for that one just yet. I'm going to go ahead and label that as a Y, just so we have a variable for it. And so this is going to be equal to Y squared. Now 2 squared is just going to equal 4, so we're going to have X squared plus 4 is equal to Y squared. And if we just go ahead and take the square root of both sides of this equation, we can write that Y is equal to the square root of X squared plus 4. All right, lovely. Let's hold on to that for a little bit later. All right, so now that we have an equation, let's now talk about time, distance, and speed. The total time this person is spending traveling is going to be equal to the amount of time they're spending in the boat plus the time spent walking. Now, to figure out the time in the boat and the time walking, we're going to have to do a little bit of work on the side here and think about what's going on. Now, the rate in the boat is going to be 3 miles per hour, and the rate that they're walking is going to be 5 miles per hour. You want to go back and remember that equation that you've learned in the past, hopefully, which is equal to distance is equal to rate times time. If we go ahead and rearrange this, we can say that time is going to be equal to distance divided by whatever the rate is. We know the rate at which the boat is going to be moving at. We also know the rate at which we're going to be walking. But do we know the distance that we're covering? Well, the distance that we're covering here is going to be B to L. That's going to be one of the distances that's going to be in the boat. But remember, we also call that Y. So that distance here we know is going to be Y. I'm going to go ahead and write that down at this distance or one of the distances is just going to be equal to y. And what's our other distance going to be equal to? The other distance is going to be the walking distance. So if we land right over here in our diagram and we walk the rest of the way, then this distance is going to be six minus x. So these are gonna be our two distances. This first distance over here is going to be the distance in the boat, and the second distance is gonna be the distance walking. All right, so for total time, I'm just gonna go ahead and use T and say T is gonna be equal to, and now for the time in the boat, we know that time is gonna be distance divided by rate. So let's see, for the boat, it's going to be this distance of Y divided by the speed of the boat, which is going to be three. So let's go ahead and write that down. That's going to be Y divided by the speed of three miles per hour. 
So that's gonna be the total time in the boat. What about the total time spent walking? So to take care of the walking part here, again, we know time is gonna equal distance divided by rate. What's the distance that we're walking? That's gonna be this six minus X. And what's the rate at which we're walking? That's gonna be this five miles per hour. So plugging in the distance over the rate, we're gonna go ahead and write that we have six minus this X, and this is gonna be all over five. All right, we really only want to be dealing with one variable here. So let's think back. We have this y here and remember that we have y over here. We isolated that and we knew that it was equal to the square root of x squared plus four. So let's go ahead and make that substitution. And so we just have the variable of x. Alrighty, so we finally have an equation and we can go ahead and see if we can optimize time here. Now to do that, we're gonna want to differentiate or take the derivative of the right side of this equation. Now this right side is a little bit messy the way it's written, so let's go ahead and rewrite it so it's a little bit nicer, all right? So instead of writing it just like this, I'm gonna say the time is equal to, I'm gonna go ahead and write that divided by three as a one third in front. And instead of the square root of x squared plus four, I'm gonna multiply this by the quantity of this x squared plus four and let's just raise that to the one half power. Okay, a little bit easier to take the derivative of. And then for this next part, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one fifth in front and then multiply that by the quantity of six minus X. All right, this should be a little bit easier to deal with now. So let's go ahead and give that a try. All right, so taking the derivative, we're gonna say uh, T prime here is gonna be equal to, to use that uh, power rule, this one half is gonna come down in front. So that's gonna be one half times this one third. Let's go ahead and see one half multiplied by this one third here. And then that's gonna be multiplied by this x squared plus four. Again, don't touch that, leave it alone. And then taking away one from the exponent, that's gonna be negative one half. And then make sure you take the derivative of that inside. So using that chain rule, the derivative of this x squared plus four, that's just gonna be multiplied by two x. And then the derivative of four is just gonna be zero, so we don't have to write anything there. Now, for this next part, this part actually cleans up pretty well, but using the product rule, if we go ahead and take this one fifth and then multiply by the derivative of this six minus x, that's just gonna be negative one, right? So it's one fifth times negative one. So I'm just gonna write negative one fifth here. I'm running out of space, but I don't think that matters too much here, because then you're gonna go ahead and take this uh, inside of six minus x and then multiply that by the derivative of one fifth, which is just zero, so that's just gonna cancel out. All right, so cleaning this up a bit, we're gonna say that t prime is gonna be equal to, I'm gonna go ahead and multiply this one half by one third and two x. Um, so I know that these twos are gonna cross cancel with each other, and then we're just gonna have x on top and then three on bottom. So let's go ahead and write x on top and then three on bottom. And then we're gonna multiply this by one over the square root of this x squared plus four. And then we're gonna say, we're gonna go ahead and subtract one fifth here. All right, so cleaning this up even more, let's go ahead and see that this is going to be T prime is going to be equal to X over three times the square root of this X squared plus four minus one fifth. Awesome, so now that we have the derivative and it's a little bit cleaned up, let's go ahead and see if we can optimize this and find the least amount of time it's gonna take. So if we're gonna go ahead and do that, we should set this equal to zero, right? We wanna find out when the derivative is gonna equal zero. That's always gonna optimize what we're talking about. So we're saying zero is equal to this whole thing to the right, all right? Now, if we go ahead and add one fifth to both sides, we're gonna have one fifth is equal to this x over three times the square root of x squared plus four. Then we can go ahead and cross multiply and when we do that, we're just gonna get this three times the square root of x squared plus four is equal to five x. Now, if we go ahead and square both sides of this equation, then we're gonna end up with nine multiplied by the quantity of this x squared plus four. If we go ahead and square uh, those on the left side, then on the right side, we're gonna have 25 x squared. Then going ahead and just distributing this nine to both terms over here, we'll get nine x squared plus 36 is equal to 25 x squared. Then if we go ahead and subtract this 9x squared from both sides of the equation, we find that 16x squared is equal to 36. Then we can go ahead and divide both sides by the 16. And we'll get x squared is equal to 36 over 16. And finally, if we take the square root of both sides, we're going to get x is equal to uh, plus or minus 6 over 4. 
Now remember that x is the distance along the shoreline, so we know that that distance can't be negative, so it can be zero, I guess, technically, uh, but we're really saying it's gonna be between the zero and six, so we gotta say that we know that we can't have a negative number for x here at all, right? So if that's the case, we can go ahead and simplify this. Six over four is really three over two, or 1.5, so I'm gonna say x is equal to 1.5, or one and a half. So let's go ahead and look back at our picture here. Um, notice where x is, x is right over here. So it looks like that's gonna be this distance from here to here, right? So it's definitely not drawn to proportion here, but we do know that this distance is gonna be 1.5. So if we go ahead and move this over a little bit, we're saying that this distance from here to here is going to be 1.5 miles. And so this distance here must be 4.5 miles. So when the question is, is how far from the house should the person land the rowboat, then this person should be in the rowboat from here to here, traveling along that distance of Y, and they should land 4.5 miles away from the house. So they're going to travel this 4.5 on foot, while they're going to travel this distance on the boat. So again, this person's going to be traveling in the boat from here to here, traveling along the distance of Y. They're going to go ahead and land at this point at point L, and they're going to go ahead and walk 4.5 miles from L all the way to the house over here. So they're going to go ahead and land 4.5 miles away from the house. All right, so let's go ahead and write that down and say that they should land 4.5 miles away from the house. And just in case you wanted to know, if we now found out that x over here is equal to 1.5, and you wanted to find out how much distance they spent uh, on the boat here, you can take that 1.5 and just substitute that in right here, and you can find out the length of y, which would tell you the distance they spent on the rowboat. Alrighty, cool. So there you have an optimization problem dealing with this person that's spending some time in a robo and some time walking. And we're just trying to optimize and figure out the least amount of time uh, required to take this person from in the robo in the water over here uh, at point B and to get to that point where they're at uh, the house, which is point H. So that combination that we just found out is going to be they should land 4.5 miles away from the house and then they should walk the rest of the way from there to optimize the least amount of time. So that just about wraps up this video. If you found it helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing with a classmate or friend who might also find it helpful. And as always, keep up the great work that you're already doing, and I'll see you in the next one.